while there are different approaches to testing that result in different notions of coverage, there are also different times at which you test within the V process. Unit testing down at the bottom center of the V typically involves executing tests against a single code module doing subroutine tests with various inputs. These can be very extensive and get very high white box test coverage. At the next level up is integration test, which is more about do modules play nice with each other. And that can be some combination of white box and black box testing. Up higher is software test, where you're exercising at the system level all the software functions of a system or subsystem. And that tends to be much more black box about did you actually hit all the requirements. At the top right of the V is acceptance test, which has to do with whole products tests of both hardware and software together, mostly looking at customer use scenarios. And those are generally almost entirely black box tests. But you also typically see some smoke tests and some exploratory testing just to make sure that the requirements seem to be complete and accurate in terms of customer usage scenarios. There are other places where testing show up and they have their own uses. Beta test, for example, is supposed to see if representative users discover defects. Now this test gets abused. A lot of times people take software which may not be fully baked and they sell it to people and they say, well, we'll just call it beta and that way people know it's not 100% and then they send it to the public. And that can uh, lead to problems with your public perception of your company. Strictly speaking, beta testing should not be a full-scale public release, but rather should be released to just a few trusted customers who have reasonable expectations and are going to be very diligent in reporting bugs back to you. Regression testing is an approach to testing to see if a previously fixed bug comes back. So this means that every time you fix a bug, you create a test to make sure that bug was actually fixed. And then you run it every time you touch the software to make sure that a previously known bug didn't come back to bite you. Performance testing isn't really about functional correctness, but rather about the ability of the system to handle a high workload and to identify performance bottlenecks. So in this case, the Oracle isn't really looking for correct answers. Well, you hope they're correct. It's much more interested in how long things take to run and whether you have some sort of computational bottleneck. Robustness testing has to do with what happens when you get invalid inputs to the system. While the invalid inputs might result in undefined behavior, generally it's a bad idea if that undefined behavior causes an entire system crash or some dangerous output. So typically with robustness testing, you see some exceptional inputs being put in, and the oracle is something straightforward, such as the system doesn't crash, the system doesn't hang, or the system does not violate its safety requirements. Security testing has to do with whether there are vulnerabilities that an attacker can use to penetrate the system. And again, there, it's often more about exceptional inputs and strange things the system was not designed to handle and seeing whether attackers can use those vulnerabilities to get a toehold in the system. Finally, fault injection, which is related to robustness and security testing, involves simulating component failures or flipping bits in memory or otherwise simulating what happens when something goes wrong. And again, the measure of uh, test success is often not, did it work perfectly, but rather did it behave in a reasonable manner? And did it especially not do something unsafe, even though a reasonably expected fault actually occurred?